this decision of making uh, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated film, which is uh, he's currently working on. He also said that he is very excited to see what he creates. So that's interesting. I think I think it's, it's dope. It's a dope idea. Um, is it is it live action Seth Rogen thing or is it animated? I think Rogan's is animated, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Uh, big Comic Con news. We also got our first tease at John Wick Chapter Four. Um, Fuck yeah! Give me give me John Wick five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. They're gonna go, uh, even though it'll be way better, but Fast and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like that's already what they're doing. What the 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 they, they always somehow outdo themselves with the casting choices in each one. You know, and this new one, you got fucking Bill Skarsgård showing up, and like a bunch of just random dudes. Donnie in like this cast is incredibly stacked. <laughs> And then we still have, you know, Keanu to just gawk at, being crazy. Yeah, I think I think I could you could say they progress progressively gotten better, right? I mean, at least I think so. I still love the the simplicity of the first one. That's still my 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 favorite. Uh, but yes, as far as like storytelling and the choreography, how do you say the casting choices, the color palette? the um the art direction it's all top shelf yes it is um yeah you know i haven't even seen the, the teaser that they, they dropped for it yet what <laughs> you need to watch that along with that red cross campaign <laughs> uh all right so that was it for james's news if you wanted to uh take it away spider-man first 10 year um it's Supposedly set like before the events of Civil War, following Peter, um, obviously in his freshman year um, high school, that was announced at a Comic Con, with um, <clears throat> our boy Charlie Cox coming back to voice Daredevil, which is fucking awesome, and like a whole supposedly like a whole bunch of uh, villains are, are showing up, like uh, Pyromaniac, Scorpion, Chameleon, Doctor Doctor Ock. Um, Harry Osborn, Amadeus Cho, who who's, uh, takes over the mantle as, as, as the Hulk in the comics. So that's interesting that they're bringing him in as well. They announced Gremlins, Secrets of the, of the Mogwai. Did you hear about that? I had heard a few couple years since a couple years ago that it was going to be for stars, I want to say. Uh, I don't... Is it for stars? I thought it was HBO. I just assumed it was HBO. <laughs> HBO. Um, but yeah, like, um, the cast is stacked. It looks, it looks fucking awesome. <clears throat> um, real quick, I wanted to add on to going back to what you said about Joe Dante, the director of Gremlins, um, saying, <laughs> saying that, uh, that Grogu was a, a blatant ripoff of, of, um, Gizmo, like I do, I do um, see where he's coming from, but at the same time, it's like you, that's when you know you've affected pop culture. Like you've imprinted yourself into pop culture because the reason why I think that he, you know, said what he said is because they created a lot of that puppetry from scratch. It didn't exist while making Gremlins. You know what I mean? Like they literally came up with all of that like how they did that film on the on the fly um mm -hmm. so he just i think that he just holds those times like you know dear and and i understand uh but at the same time it's like that's a compliment like if even if it was like grogu was based off of gizmo like you know that's rad why would you be upset yeah, I think it would have came off a little, little better, like you said, if he would have kind of like, I mean, you can even still take a take a stat, uh, you know, a jab at, at Grogu in, in the Mandalorian, but yeah, dude, I think it's awesome that you know he they, it, that movie 
has had an impact on on things, all different types of things, and and it shows. Like you can, you can't deny that fact. <laughs> that fact. But yeah, uh, going back to the the, the animated show, um, Zach Galligan is coming back and voicing, doing voice work for it. So that's awesome. And then uh, of course, we got um, all the Marvel news. I'm sure you, you have stuff about that as well. But they basically just gave a map of everything coming out in phase five um which is insane like if you see i don't know if you've seen that picture of like the the phase five roadmap yes yes i did um to see like everything that's coming out is insane like phase five starts in february with the ant-man um, ant-man and the wasp and uh, quantum mania and then secret invasion for disney plus Guardians in May, Echo in, in summer, in the summer 2023, um, Loki season two, which is dope in, in, in summer 2023 as well. And then the Marvels, Blade, Ironheart, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, Daredevil, New Captain America, and then it ends with Thunderbolts. Um, yeah, it's a pretty stacked, stacked phase. How do you feel about all those movies or any of them stick out? I'm really, really stoked to see what they do with Blade. <laughs> since it's been such a long time since what was the last one? Blade Trinity. Or tr- tr- Trinity. Tr- uh, Trinity. Um, <laughs> we're not going to count that shitty like TNT series, whatever that was. You remember when they... Tr- when they Holy shit, you just unlocked the memory I forgot I had. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Blade, of course, Guardians... Um, Batman, uh, every all of it. I'm stoked for all of it. Pretty, pretty <clears throat> insane. Uh, but we should let's let's segue into uh, the brilliance that was uh, the Wakanda Forever trailer. Holy shit! Yeah, dude. Fuck, man. It, it's the task they had and and Ryan Coogler had of, of like rewriting everything or rewriting it uh, and with all like the the everything that happened in, in putting the production of it covid and stuff like that it, it's just insane um to 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 think that they they got through it all and from the trailer i mean it looks like it's it just from the trailer alone like it looks like it's probably going to be the most um emotional Marvel movie. Yeah, um, ambitious. Well, <clears throat> ambitious. Um, I mean, that opening scene of, of, of um, Lupita like, looking into the water and, and that cover of, of, of that Marley song. <clears throat> and then how it transitions into Kendrick kind of stating that even throughout all the loss that they, they've endured um, everything's going to be all right. It, it just, <laughs> man, at the end of that trailer, I, yeah, no, I had tears. Yep. It definitely hit all the, all the heartstrings. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, dude, it's going to be interesting to see, see that, see what the route they go. I mean, especially with that last, that last scene you get of, of someone in the Black Panther suit. Yes. I think they dropped a, a release date for prologue uh, music uh, prologue music i don't know if you saw that no i don't think so yeah um <clears throat> it's just um wakanda forever the the prologue and it's gonna be i don't know if it's one song or a couple songs but it's dropping on what is it 26 or the 28th of, of july okay um and that soundtrack kendrick you know did his thing on that <clears throat> so hopefully they bring him back for this one um yeah dude how do you feel about it very very <clears throat> excited to say the least it was it was funny watching that uh the stream of the hall h when kevin faggy is like yo we got one more thing for you <laughs> and it's the fucking oh man one more piece and it has to do with our main focus for tonight um so this past Friday, we received some exciting news 
on DC's Black Label graphic novel involving the origins of Riddler. As previously known, actor Paul Dano and director Matt Reeves had been working with illustrator Stephen Subic uh, for nearly a year on the limited comic run and now have uh basically released um some images of what we can expect as far as the art artwork for the new uh for the new book coming out oh yeah dude i'm I'm super stoked for that and what's amazing is that it's uh dc basically gave them the keys to do whatever they want because it's on the black label which is basically uh its own thing where they can do you know like uh, like violence and language whatever they need to do to to convey uh their message so that's pretty rad. yeah yeah um yeah dude it's it's fucking awesome that they, they let them do that especially on, on 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 um black label if you haven't read anything on black label there's tons of stuff that you can go and grab like um, I know one, there's a good Wonder Woman book. Um, there's a Last Night on Earth, which is like the capping off uh, Snyder and Capullo's um, Batman run. Um, White Knight is a good one. Yeah, dude, there's a lot of shit on there. So very stoked. Definitely. And to have, like, think about this, dude. All right. So the Riddler was a great villain in this newest in this newest film. For the Batman, and wh- like, when can you say like, oh yeah, that a- the same actor who portrayed him is writing his own origins comic? Yeah, I do. I didn't even. I, I yeah. If you say it like if, if you think about it like that. Yeah, I did it. <clears throat> it's like, is there anything that that dude can't do? You know, win a fucking Oscar. Give my man's an Oscar. Seriously, seriously, really. Like he didn't, he should have had one nail and nabbed one for prisoners, to be honest. And now it's time for the weekly recommendations. I think we might have the same, <laughs> the same movie. Yes. Uh, which is Jordan Peele's Nope, which just dropped uh, this past weekend. Um, we're recording this Sunday. So that way, you know, it's the end of Comic Con. So it's a, it, it's turning out to be like a farewell episode to uh, what is for me, I think, you know, the one of the greatest times of year of the year for for my city. So crazy stuff. But anyway, nope. Going back to the film came out this weekend, uh, and it seems like people, for the most part, are really loving it. And uh, you and I, although in separate towns, went to go see it opening night on Thursday. And uh, yeah, I'm still kind of processing everything that I witnessed on the screen. It's pretty wild. Yeah, dude. I, I, as soon as I walked out, I, I, I told Sammy, like, I got to go see it again. Like, I have to see it again. And I've been processing it the last couple of days. I know I texted you like my first reaction after I'd gone out the movie theater. Like I whipped out my phone as fast as I can. I was like, I got to take what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, it's dude. I just speechless. That's all I could say. Um, like obviously no spoilers because it's only been out, you know, four days, but <clears throat> three days, but it's, um, and it's a master class in suspense. That's all I will say. I think I told you, I think I might have told you, but like I, it, it stressed me out so much that it legitimately gave me a headache. Yeah. I mean, like, again, I, I always say this, like if a movie can really make you feel uncomfortable or, or worried, then you're completely invested and it's done its job, you know, mm-hmm. to, to the fullest extent, because it takes a lot um to 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 pull in uh you know a, a, a viewer like that and peel i feel like what's most interesting about him is he seems like he's not confined to to genre your usual uh genre constrictions you know because i feel like nope is completely different 
than his first two films. 